back to DBX Labs. Today we're going to convert the sodium nitrotetrazole we made in the last video to the silver salt of nitrotetrazole. And uh, we're not going to make a whole lot of the silver salt um, because it is more sensitive than the sodium salt, but it does have uh, more energetic properties to it and we'll address those in this video. Now the source of silver that I will be using in this video comes from a U.S. dime from before 1965. Uh, these U.S. dimes are 90% uh, silver um, and 10% copper. Now in this procedure, uh, I find that that 10% copper will be negligible for the yield because that will um, uh, react with the nitrotetrazole and forms copper, uh, form copper 2 nitrotetrazole which isn't the copper one nitrotetrazole, um, which is designated as uh, um, uh, DBX1. So we'll make that in the next video. Uh, for now, we're just going to um, assume that that 10% copper uh, is negligible uh, towards our yield of silver nitrotetrazole. I find that it makes very little difference with the reactivity. I have ran the procedure with pure silver uh, after precipitating out the silver um, from the silver and copper nitrate solutions and um, uh, reacting it with nitric acid again, but it, I find it makes no difference. Um, it works either way and the uh, sensitivity of the compound is the same regardless. I have prepared the two solutions. Uh, over here I have the silver nitrate in solution and over here, the sodium nitrotetrazole. Um, now I will just react uh, the two in a one-step precipitation reaction. Um, I'm going to go the silver nitrate into the nitrotetrazole solution, but um, it doesn't really matter. So um, there is no exotherm in this reaction, and it goes quite smoothly. As you can see, the white precipitate, the silver nitrotetrazole, comes right out of solution. If both starting solutions were saturated, we should be left with a thick white precipitate. The precipitate is only slightly soluble in ice cold water, so we add some to make the filtration step a little bit easier. Although the precipitate silver nitrotetrazole is not soluble in ethanol, do not add ethanol to the solution as any excess silver nitrite may form silver fulminate. We will now use gravity filtration to separate out the filtrate. Small amounts of the wet product detonate after sustained heating. The dry product, however, detonates immediately and with extreme brilliance. What the silver salt really has going for it is it has a very low DDT, deflic 
<coughs> deflagration to detonation temperature. I believe it's something like uh, 190 degrees Celsius, uh, which is low enough for an energetic to uh, have it, a use as a primary, um, uh, but not high enough that it um, it can't be reached by a fuse. Um, the other thing it has going for it is it doesn't have to melt before it detonates, like um, say sodium nitrotetrazole, which we saw in the last video. It does have to melt before it detonates, and that makes it unusable as a primary because uh, if it has to melt before it detonates, that also means it has to absorb thermal energy from the fuse, uh, which may mean that it won't go off at all because you may uh, just have molten nitrotetrazole I mean sodium nitrotetrazole, which um, hasn't gone off because all the energy went to melting it, not setting it off. Uh, this stuff, as soon as it reaches 190 degrees Celsius, it goes off. And uh, that's pretty clear to see um, when you do the, the, um, the heating tests from underneath the, the test, uh, the test sample. So here I have a match. I'm going to blow it out and we'll take that hot ember and set it off. Uh, that really wasn't a lot of um, the silver nitro tetrazole, but you could see that it still uh, popped and went off. With a larger test sample, it would still be that clear, but we know that um, a fuse will set off the, this uh, silver nitro tetrazole. Uh, because it doesn't have to melt first. In tests for shock sensitivity, the dry product detonates uncontained. So in that detonation with the uh, 50 milligrams, you can see it did a lot of damage. Um, uh, but surprisingly, there are no exit exit holes. Um, but there are, although there there are a couple bumps where you can tell that um, uh, a piece of or a piece of shrapnel hit the the back side of the the can pretty hard. But in an earlier run, I actually did get exit holes and quite a few of them, um, and it just shows you that this stuff is not only blowing up very good uh, very quickly but to everything it's moving out of its way with its extreme brilliance, brilliance uh, tell me if I'm saying that wrong um, it's accelerating bits and pieces of metal to supersonic velocities and ripping them uh, ri shooting a piece of metal through another piece of metal um, and that piece of metal that shot has minute mass so it's really impressive to see this after blowing up the cans pretty good I was thinking of something else that I could uh, blow up with the silver salt and um, originally I was going to blow this fella up um, by putting the salt uh, right around where his chest is uh, and drilling through his head into his chest to put the fuse there. That didn't work because obviously I drilled through his chest. So I thought I could use this because I saw it flying around the house. And um, I mean, everyone's seen one of these. They know what, what they do. They, you, you put something underneath it and it stands up on here. Uh, and I figured if I removed some of the, the green little pins, I could fit a blasting cap um, in uh, in the center and see what kind of area is um, affected by 50 milligrams of the silver salt. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll take this outside, obviously, and um, see if uh, there's any sort of... Um, radius of damage that appears. Well, it did a lot of damage, that's for sure. Um, it, uh, 
I don't think it broke the uh, the black plastic of it, but it certainly um, destroyed a good part of this. And you can see there's that radius of damage. A few of these came out, um, and these are broken. So they're like half the length of the um, of the pins before they were shattered. And um, I'd say that's a successful demolition. Uh, I don't think that's even a demolition, but it was successful. I didn't think it would do this much, um, but it did. It was only 50 milligrams of the silver salt. So that that's a win. That's a win in my opinion. So it's cool. Thank you all for watching today's episode of DBX Labs. Um, on the next video, I'm going to either make um, copper one nitro tetrazole or um, the tetrazine. That's a very interesting energetic um, that's kind of fun to work with. Um, I also might put a, a short video up sometime soon um, uh, where I shoot some um, uh, touch powder, nitrogen triiodide with some uh, airsoft BBs um, uh, with my airsoft gun and um, I don't think that's anywhere on YouTube as of right now and uh, I find it works pretty well to set off the energetic um, <clears throat> that is nitro uh, nitrogen triiodide um, so thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time